Hello, in this video we are going to look into one-way ANOVA or one-way analysis of variance. We'll look into how to run, interpret and report one-way ANOVA. Now one-way analysis of variance or one-way ANOVA, how and why it is used. As mentioned before in previous videos, one sample t-test is used to compare mean of a sample against some standard value or mean of the population. Independent samples t-test is used to compare if there are differences in the sample mean for two different groups. What if you have three different groups or more than three different groups and you want to check whether there are significant differences ac across the three different groups. Now one way analysis of variance is also referred to as one way between groups ANOVA because you will have one independent that is your grouping variable with three or more levels, the groups, and one dependent continuous variable. In simple words, one-way ANOVA is used to compare scores of three or more than three groups. Now following are a few scenarios in which you could consider using one-way ANOVA. For instance, an economist would like to know if there are differences in income of lecturers across the cities of London, Paris, and Islamabad. Or is there a difference in optimism level scores across different age groups? Or a manager wishes to evaluate if staff satisfaction scores differ across permanent, part-time or and casual staff. Now in each of the above mentioned situations, there is one dependent variable and an independent variable that has different categories. One way ANOVA allows evaluating or checking for differences across the different categories for the dependent variable. For instance, in this case, for in maybe uh, the income evaluated across three different cities. So your income is your dependent variable, whereas the independent variable is the uh, number of cities or the cities, in this case three cities. It is called analysis of variance because it compares the variance variability of scores between the different groups believed to be due to the independent variable. Now how do you run this? Let's go to SPSS. Now here uh, we have one dependent variable which is organizational uh, commitment and an independent grouping variable rank. Now we have three ranks junior, middle and senior. So in order to run one way ANOVA you go to analyze, you select compare means and from there on you select one way ANOVA. Press one way ANOVA. Now it will ask you for what is your dependent variable. In this case we have got only one so we can have multiple variables at the same time tested at the same time for one single grouping variable. So in this case we are using single so organizational commitment is added as dependent and rank is added as factor. We go to options and we want descriptives and homogeneity of variance. So why it is used we'll see in a moment. Just press continue and press OK. Now here are our results. Now we get three tables. Now the first table it gives you the descriptives. Now if you see we've got 90 respondents at the junior level, we've got 206 at the middle level, and we've got 45 respondents at the senior level. And these are their mean scores with their standard deviation, standard error, the lower and upper bound for 95% uh, confidence interval for mean, the minimum value, the mean value, and the maximum mean value. So what we are really concerned about is, for instance, in this case our hypothesis is that there are significant differences in organizational commitment across the three job levels. Now what we see here is that the significance value is less than 0 0.05 even it's less than 0 0.001 so this shows that yes there are significant differences in organizational commitment across the three job levels. Having said that now the question arises is are there significant differences between each of the groups like junior has a significant difference with 
middle or between junior and middle there are significant differences between middle and senior there are significant differences and between junior and senior there are significant differences so there are significant differences in between each of the groups well actually this table is not telling us this this step this this particular table is actually letting us know that yes there are overall there are significant differences now in order to find out whether these significant or these differences are significant between each of the groups we will need another analysis that will complement this analysis and that is called post hoc analysis now in order to run post hoc analysis we need to first evaluate the second table here that is test of homogeneity of variances now in this case this is significant which means that equal variance is not assumed between the groups now if you go back to independent sample t test we have explained there that how what is meant by homogeneity of variances now in this case equal variance is not assumed so how does this help if we go back to our analysis and we go to post hoc here we've got two options one is equal variance assumed one is equal variance not assumed now when you want to evaluate or further assess the differences between groups what you need to do is you need to make a selection from each of one 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 of the groups now shall i make a selection from equal variance assumed or equal variance not assumed in this case when the levine's test of equality of variance is significant so equal variance is not assumed this means that there are significant differences in the variances of the scores between these groups so what we do is we select one of the option then it is most probably uh, mostly used so we'll you go for this and then we what we do is we press continue and you press okay and apart from the same tables that we got earlier we get a new table and this is multiple comparisons table so when you compare the scores for organizational commitment between junior and middle rank there are no significant differences but when we compare the score between junior and senior rank employees there is a difference in organizational commitment now if we go back to the descriptive table we can see that seniors have a higher level of commitment in comparison to juniors now middle and junior they do not have a uh, significant difference obviously it's the same as the previous row so there is uh, duplication so you need to remove this duplication when you are reporting results so we'll see how we remove this and middle and senior they also have a significant a uh, difference now these the the third row is just the repetition of the previous row so we do not need to uh, go through the those those rows again now how do you report these results if you look at the table here or the document here i've already done that in order to save us time with i'm just going to go into detail as to how to report now for example the problem is to investigate if uh, the organizational commitment across different levels within the organization to investigate if the organizational commitment differs sorry for the mistake and you mentioned the three levels now what's the hypothesis there are significant differences in organizational commitment across the different management levels because these are actually management levels now how do you report the results so we start by the hypothesis tests if the organizational commitment of employees differs across different management levels Parti participants were divided into three groups group 1 junior group 2 middle and group 3 senior the anova results suggests that the organizational commitment scores of the groups differ significantly now let's see our results yes it differs significantly but there's a slight mistake 9.248 this should have been corrected let me correct it and the p value is less than 0.001 now yes overall there are significant differences now what is this f and 4338 well actually this comes from here so between groups the degrees of freedom is 2 and within groups it's 338 so let me make the correction here sorry for the mistakes so so it's 2338 now moving on 
we want to evaluate whether the differences now overall you did get significant differences now we want to evaluate whether or not the differences are significant between each of the groups or, or not so the first thing you report your Levine's statistic which was significant the equal variance was not assumed in order to check for individual differences between groups post hoc comparison using Dunnett t3 was selected the test indicated that the mean score for junior level now you report the mean scores was significantly different from senior level employees so what I have done here is uh, I've only reported the significant differences in the text uh, you can report all of them but obviously if you have got more than three groups uh, the things is that it becomes very crowded uh, too, too, too verbose and uh, obviously um, it's, uh, there's no need to report every single different, uh, difference if it's not significant. So in this case, there are significant differences between junior level and senior level. So you report the means and here you can refer to ta table and see the differences. Now, there is no zero in between, so obviously you can say that it is significant. So middle level employees differed significantly from senior level employees. So there, here it is, middle and senior. The mean differences were significant at this level. However, no significant differences were detected between junior and middle level employees. However, if you've got more than three groups, four, five, six groups, you can say that, however, no significant differences were detected between other groups. This is how you can format your table and report your results for one way and over. I hope this uh, video was, would have helped you understand the concept of ANOVA, how to run ANOVA and how to report, uh, report ANOVA results. Thank you very much for watching.